Falcon 9 is in startup. And we call, heard the call out for startup. Let's listen in for the launch director to give go for a final go for launch. Falcon 9, Starlink LD is go for launch. Never heard the call out. All systems are go for launch. Let's launch as this seconds. Falcon 9 takes our 53 Starlink satellites into orbit. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Vehicle is pitching down range. M one D chamber pressure is nominal. And Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites. Although at liftoff, gravity is pulling straight down on the rocket. As we ascend, we'll tilt the engines, technical term is gimbling, and that turns the All rocket right, horizontally. We're still going up, but now we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. It's what we call a gravity turn. Moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q. We're in the throttle bucket. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q is the point during which the vehicle is under maximum dynamic pressure. Max Q. There we've passed through Max Q. Coming up are a series of a quick series of events happening in quick succession. First, Miko or main engine cutoff. This is where the nine Merlin engines on the first stage shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next milestone, stage separation. This is where the first stage separates from the second stage. As Start event back chill. As the first stage starts to make its way back to Earth for landing, second stage continues its journey with SES-1 or second engine start one. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage lights up and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit. About 30 seconds out from that Miko. As the rocket heads up into space, you'll start to see the plume at the aft end of the rocket begin to spread out. That's as the pressure alleviates from, from the bottom of the recoil, you can, uh, there isn't as much pressure holding in that plume. We saw main engine Miko. cut off. Call out for Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Bearing separation confirmed. And we just saw main engine cut off, stage separation, second engine startup, and fairing deploy. With the fairing half separated, the satellites are now exposed to the vacuum of space above the second stage of the rocket on the right-hand side of your screen there. While the second stage is doing its job, the first stage is coming back to home to Earth and will execute two burns. The first is the entry burn. It's a three-engine burn that helps to slow the stage down. The second, second burn is the landing burn. It's a single-engine burn that helps bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship a shortfall of gravitas, which is the equivalent to a size of a football field. If you're just joining us, we had a successful Both liftoff. Vehicles are on nominal trajectories. We had a successful liftoff from Launch Complex 39A, completed a main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start one, and fairing deploy. And now the second stage is taking our 53 Starlink satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit in low Earth orbit. 
while the first stage is making its way back home for the 12th time. On the left side of your screen there, the first stage is descending. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Falcon 9 and the Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made of carbon fiber uh, with aluminum honeycomb. These are placed symmetrically and stowed at the base of, base of the vehicle and deployed just prior to landing. Also on the left-hand side here, you'll see the Falcon 9 is also equipped with four hypersonic grid fins, two of which are in view. These are positioned near the top of the first stage and the base of the interstage. Stage one is using nothing but the grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth until we light the center engine for landing. Then we can gibble the engine and guide the stage. The grid fins orient the rocket during re-entry and then guide the rocket during descent. Also look out, you may see some puffs, some white puffs on the left side of the screen. Those are nitrogen gas bursts for attitude control. Really cool view of the first stage on the left hand side there. Some small debris in the atmosphere. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. I heard a comma call out for both stages are on nominal trajectories. As we come up on the start of entry burn in about 40 seconds here. Uh, just a reminder that that's a three second burn meant to slow the first stage down as it hits the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Right hand side of the screen, got a great view of stage two heading out into Leo. Is that sunset, sunrise on the left hand side of the screen there? up on entry burn. Stage one, FDSS. Stage one, entry burn, start up. Stage one has lit its engines to slow down for entry into the Earth's atmosphere. This burn will last about 20 seconds. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. As we previously mentioned, you were able to see some soot markings on this booster left over from previous flights. Here's a quick explanation of how that soot forms. The rocket-grade kerosene RP-1 is used to fuel Falcon 9 as a carbon-based fuel. When the fuel burns, it generates soot. And because re-entry occurs engines first, the booster flies through its own plume, which then deposits the soot on the outside of the rocket. Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. We continue to hear we're on nominal trajectories. That's a good sign right here. We come up on uh, landing, you'll be able to look potentially and see some of that soot on the sticking to the cameras. As I mentioned before, reusability is one of our top priorities because as, it, as it's key to reducing the cost of space access for all of us. By reusing the high cost components of the rocket, stage one transonic. including the first stage and the fairings, we lower the overall launch cost to just the new components or and the fuel and oxidizer. As a reminder, this is the 12th launch of this booster, having previously flown missions Crew, crew, crew Demo 2, Anasys 2, CRS-21, Transporter 1, and 3, and 6 previous Starlink missions. Just a moment here, we'll be coming up on landing burn. Stage 1 landing burn. So stage one has begun its landing burn. This is its final burn before touchdown to land on the, the drone ship. This burn lasts about 20 seconds as well. I'll look at that, a clear view. Landing leg deploy. Ah, beautiful. Stage and, one landing confirmed. And stage one has successfully landed on our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. This is the 111th recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage booster. Let's listen in for Seco 1 or second engine cutoff 1. Seco. Expect 
Rapid loss of signal. Okay. Nominal parking orbit insertion. And we heard nominal parking orbit insertion. That's good orbit. With, con with confirmation of a successful second engine cutoff and good orbit, we'll be ending our webcast for today's launch. For those of you who want to keep following this mission, we will be confirming payload deploy via our social channels. Thank you to the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. Of course, thank you to our viewers for turning in bright and early, and big thank you to our Starlink customers for using our service at this time. I hope we all, you all have a good weekend, and we'll see you soon.